So, uh, hi, uh, Circle viewers. Uh, today we have Mr. Michael Ansha, the CEO of Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation, also known as GEADEC. And he'll be talking about GEADEC's vision and the master plan to build an integrated aluminium industry in the country. So, Mr. Ansha, the first question would be, what was the driving vision uh, behind the establishment of GEADEC? Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity to talk to you. Um, so GIADEC, as you explained, is the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation. We call it GIADEC for short. It was established um, uh, through an act of parliament, actually, in 2018, but it started operations in 2019. And we're delivering what um, uh, people have described variously as a very ambitious uh, project. Uh, but, you know, we are... Uh, driving this through uh, an aspiration uh, to be the lead in the integrated aluminium industry uh, uh, player in Africa uh, yeah. with the, a view to uh, adding value to our raw materials. So if you look at GIADEC, um, government has established GIADEC, it's 100% owned by government, but we've also put in GIADEC uh, certain um, assets that will enable us to hit the ground running as, as, a, as a corporation. So uh, there's about 900 million metric tons of bauxite in Ghana. All of that bauxite has been novated to GIADEC. So if you look across the country, all the bauxite resources we have sit on the books of GIADEC. Secondly, we have um, an aluminium smelter in Ghana, which has been operating since about 1967, uh, uh, Volta Aluminium Company, or Valco for short. That is now 100% owned by GIADEC. We have an operating mine in Ghana uh, that um, is Ghana Bauxite Company has existed in various guises, uh, commenced operations uh, uh, in its uh, earlier uh, um, kind of uh, iteration uh, in the 1940s and has been operating since then. Today, Ghana owns a 20% stake and GIADEC holds the 20% stake in Ghana Bauxite Company. So if you, if you say what is GIADEC, uh, GIADEC is a holding company. Uh, it has operating uh, subsidiaries. It has a 20% stake in the mining operation and it has a 100% stake in the smelting operation. And um, that's the, the vision behind establishing GIADEC was to bring all these assets together and to enable us to develop an integrated aluminium industry in Ghana uh, with full integration of mining, refining, smelting, and even the development of downstream industries. So that is if like the, the vision that is driving uh, 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 what we're doing. So I'll sum it up as uh, we want to achieve leadership in the integrated aluminium industry in Ghana. We want to drive value addition by adding value to all our raw materials, uh, especially in this case, bauxite, and making sure that uh, we sell value added products, whether it's alumina or it's aluminium or it's the downstream industries that we develop. Uh, we want to make sure that we drive a national agenda that will help us to achieve industrialization. So mm. the, the industrial transformation that Ghana wants to drive uh, GIADEC is one of the key areas that we believe will achieve industrial transformation uh, by using aluminium as a basis for industrializing our economy. Okay. So what inspired GIADEC's vision for developing an integrated aluminium industry and how do you envision this plan impacting Ghana's economic future? Uh, that's a very good question. Uh, I've talked about integration. Uh, you know, basically, we've been saddled with uh, uh, exporting uh, raw materials uh, over the years. So whether it's gold or it's diamonds or it's, uh, in this case, bauxite, we've been exporting our raw materials for a very long period of time. Now we want to take a step back and say, how do we add value to these raw materials? So if you're looking at what inspired the vision, it's about value addition again. You know, we wanted to add value to our raw materials and we want to use that as a basis to drive industrialization. I've talked about the history of this, you know, since the 1960s. Uh, we've attempted to build an industrial base uh, through the uh, integrated aluminium industry. That led to the development of the Akosombo Dam, uh, which is a, a, a hydro-powered uh, uh, dam. Um, and that led to the building of the smelter, uh, the Valco smelter, as I mentioned. We've been mining in Ghana since the 1940s. So though we've been doing all of these things, we've never driven the full integration of the industry. And we want to intentionally do uh, continue to do the, the smelting and, and drive the industrial transformation. The you know, GDP growth, etc. 
uh, this becoming a huge contributor to the economy is what has driven what we're doing. Right. So can you provide uh, some insights into the timeline and phases of the master plan? And uh, how do you plan to ensure smooth coordination and progression of the various projects? Yeah, so, so if you're talking about a timeline uh, of the projects that we were driving, so let me uh, take a step back to that question. So in, in terms of defining our master plan, right, I said we had uh, 900 million metric tons of bauxite. Uh, we want to make sure that we drive this in a very uh, coordinated way. So uh, we've developed a master plan, which is anchored around creating about four mines across Ghana. Uh, bauxite occurs in uh, three separate locations, so we want to create about four mines and then use the mines uh, to then develop uh, refineries, uh, that is uh, re uh, refining the bauxite that we produce in Ghana, and then go on to do the smelting. So our master plan is anchored on four mines, uh, delivering some like two uh, refineries, and then uh, retrofitting or modernizing our existing smelter in, in, the, in the main, that is a bonus of our master plan. And then of course, driving the development of downstream industries. In terms of timeline, uh, we've um, we began, as I said, operations in 2019. Um, uh, in 2021, we signed um, an agreement with our first uh, partner, uh, Rockshaw International, is a wholly owned Ghanaian company. Uh, they have since been developing uh, one of the prospects. Uh, we've established the uh, uh, it's like the mineral resource estimation for that prospect and we're in the process of developing the refinery solution and uh, taking it through our processes to begin operation. So that second project is ongoing. Uh, as it is now, uh, we've developed four projects. The first one is the uh, development of the uh, existing mine that we have in um, uh, Awaso, which is uh, part of the uh, one of the areas where we've been mining, that's what we've been mining for the last 70 years or so. But expanding that mine and then building a refinery, that project uh, uh, is, is ongoing. Uh, that mine is currently owned by a Ghanaian partner in us. Um, there, uh, there is that, uh, uh, that project has been developed. The second project is the one with Rockshaw International, as I've mentioned, again, developing a mine and a refinery solution. Um, the, third, the, the, the third project, I beg your pardon, is um, uh, one that we're developing with a, a major uh, European company uh, that's uh, an industrial uh, company uh, that is uh, already a company that's already in mining, refining and smelting and a leader in integrated aluminum industry market. Uh, I'm glad we've been able to uh, reach agreements with them. We're going to be signing uh, the enabling agreements very shortly. So that will lead to the development of the third project, which is uh, an integrated project that is a mine and a refinery and then uh, the final one is the retrofitting and modernization of our smelter uh, at Tema. Uh, today we're producing um, you know though we have a nameplate of 200,000 tons uh, we're producing just about 50,000 tons a year and the plan is to retrofit the plant uh, to be able to produce 300,000 tons uh, we are already in the market looking for partners uh, for that and, and uh, that, that project uh, should start by 2024. So the projects are developing 2020, uh, 2019, uh, we started developing project one, uh, 2021, we uh, signed project two. This year we'll sign project three and by next year we should be signing project four. Uh, and of course, all of these are developing at different stages, um, but we're being intentional and methodical about the approach that we're using uh, because we're bringing in private sector capital and, and this is all entirely private sector financed, uh, of course, we and our partners will make those decisions uh, around execution timelines, uh, but we've signed some notional timelines uh, because of confidentialities. I'm not able to, uh, you know, rattle all of them, but essentially we're working with a program that I will say will be executed between 2021, where we signed uh, the, uh, Rockshaw International through to about 2028, I will say a seven year uh, time frame. If you look at, um, you know, how long it's taken to build refineries in, in the rest of the world, uh, like the latest one in Alta Wheeler, for instance, it took about uh, uh, five to seven years or so to build. Uh, so this, this, these are sort of uh, driving the timelines that I'm talking about. So I'm looking uh, to 2028 or so. So good progress so far. Um, the very, um, there are some very real challenges. Uh, as you'd imagine, there's a huge uh, capital project uh, that will require investment uh, to execute the entire thing of something in the region of about six billion US dollars. So it's not insignificant. It is it is a massive undertaking. 
and we're very much aware of this. Uh, our partners are also aware of this. There are some huge risks. Um, there's the infrastructure that needs to be developed to enable what we're talking about, uh, in particular railways. Uh, we are some way towards building uh, the, the railway. It's about um, 250 kilometers or so to the mining areas. Uh, we built a railway that's about uh, 100 kilometers, and we're still working on uh, continuing to develop that. Uh, there is also the power infrastructure. Uh, we've come to an agreement that will ensure that power will be delivered uh, to this industry at about three and a half cents per kilowatt hour, which makes us competitive with the rest of the world. And then um, there's also the port infrastructure. And that port infrastructure uh, has been enabled. Uh, the Takradi port, which is the, the main bulk shipment port in Ghana, uh, has been, we've seen investment going into that. Uh, today, we're able to uh, berth cape size vessels, uh, you know, mini capes and cape size vessels will be able to berth there. And we're developing all the facilities that we need uh, to be able to, um, you know, enable the, uh, uh, you know, transportation of the products that we're talking about. So, all of these things go to show that you know we're working in a very integrated way uh, around the infrastructure, uh, power, transportation, and uh, port infrastructure in particular, and then also addressing the development uh, with our partners uh, on the uh, development of the, the industrialization part of it. So we, we're, we're expecting that all of these will come together as we move along the chain. Uh, and because we've developed them uh, in, in four separate projects, it allows us to manage the risks uh, within each project and to drive um, a more common approach to delivering this whole project. Thank you. Understood. And so my next question was about the progress, but I think your uh, previous answer pretty much uh, made, made us that, yeah. aware of the progress. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, so what challenges does Geotech anticipate in uh, developing an integrated aluminum industry um, and what are the measures to overcome them? Yeah, so I, I think I've, I've um, sort of touched on the infrastructure part of it uh, because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we don't own the um, develop, delivery of the infrastructure, but we're coordinating that with uh, various groups like our railways uh, organization, our port organization, our power organization. So the infrastructure bit is, is one key area, in particular the railway, completing the railway in time because that will is what will also drive the uh, execution of the projects uh, to, to a degree. So, so that's one. Um, the second thing I'll mention is the markets. I mean, obviously, when you produce, you want to make sure that you've got, uh, you've locked in some markets. Uh, this industry is, is notorious, I would say, for, um, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 on the marketing side, you know, some very big players uh, who, of course, are already in the market and have uh, annexed certain, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, important markets, so to speak. I mean, we export our bauxite today mainly to China. Uh, I think in future we will we'll, we'll, uh, broaden that spread. Um, uh, if we once we produce alumina, the key thing is the markets that we'll sell to. So what we're doing is we're bringing in partners who have access to uh, the supply chains uh, of the world. So whether uh, you know uh, through the uh, our project three, like I said, our deep, we're developing an established company that has. Uh, uh, refineries and smelters, and therefore have a need to source alumina. So, so that recovers, uh, you know, covers uh, the alumina that will be produced from here. Uh, the refinery solution we're developing, uh, for instance, we've been working on this for uh, the best part of one year, and uh, we've uh, now uh, come to one that I think is is a very exciting um, uh, project that will lead to the delivery of um, uh, probably a two million ton alumina refinery. Uh, but which will be built on the basis of uh, agreed offtakes. So that will make it a very um, exciting project for us. It will de-risk the building of a 2 million ton uh, refinery and will also uh, help with the financing of a project like that uh, because of the offtakes. So, you know, we're, we're doing some exciting things, um, you know, and uh, once these are uh, uh, developed and, and I'm and, uh, in a position to share, I'll, I'll share the details of it. But suffice it to say that those are, if like two major uh, risks that I see, uh, infrastructure and market, but we're addressing the two uh, in, in some fairly uh, smart ways. Of course, there are other challenges, uh, you know, to do with um, other risks that we have addressed, some of it within our control, others not in our control. Uh, but when you're dealing with a, a, a massive project like this, you know, you've got to uh, be able to uh, balance all those balls in the air and, um, you know, uh, you know, the world has been hit by COVID, for instance. Uh, that was not in our plan. That delayed our progress. 
uh, for a good uh, couple of years, I would say. You know, so these sorts of things, uh, some things you can control, some things you can't. But um, broadly speaking, uh, we're, we're moving ahead uh, as, as we can. Thank you. So the modernization of Valco is one important aspect of this uh, master plan. So mm -hmm. could you provide more insights into the specific technological upgrades that will be implemented to increase production? Yes, so that, that's a, an interesting question, but um, I would say that uh, those who know the Valco plant know that it was originally built by Kaiser and Reynolds. Uh, Kaiser uh, has always been a leading player in this market. Uh, and uh, they built it in line with their technology, which is uh, called uh, in industry terms the P69 technology. Uh, the P69 technology, if you know, um, has been since been uh, superseded. Uh, and uh, today there are more modern technologies, there are more efficient technologies, there are more um, uh, better ways of designing smelters and uh, making sure that your uh, the cost per ton, uh, you know, is in increasingly um, reduced uh, to ensure uh, efficiencies. So uh, what we're doing here is that instead of scrapping the entire plant, uh, we're looking to retrofit the entire plant. We're looking to modernize the entire plant. Uh, we've seen examples of this being done um, by uh, Dubai. Uh, for instance, in Dubai, we've seen uh, Alba in Bahrain. We've seen uh, other places where the P69 was the base technology and they've since, uh, you know, uh, uh, if like modernized. So the modernization is, is real and it's something that we can do. So we've done a lot of work on doing that. So what we're going to do is to re revitalize that. Uh, if you take Dubai, for instance, they're using what they call the D18, which is the proprietary technology. Uh, we're looking at uh, something benchmarking against the D18 because that was a transformation of the P69 to the D18. Uh, so we're looking at something similar uh, or, or better. Uh, and uh, uh, we are in the market today as we speak. Uh, I'm glad to say we've got some significant interest uh, from uh, established players as, as well as uh, uh, new players, uh, you know, from all around the world, uh, even including some from India. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we're, we're looking to see that we can uh, partner, the right partner, you know, who understands the development we're trying to drive. We're not looking for a partner who will impose their plans on us. Uh, we've been very clear on what our strategy and our plan is, and it's important that there is a fit. Uh, in, in whoever we select and and, and uh, that organization uh, having the technology, having the capacity, having the financial uh, wherewithal uh, to partner with us. Uh, we have a, a site that, albeit uh, an old site, it's still, uh, you know, the, the location of it, the infrastructure that we have there, uh, etc., is great. And uh, th there's a lot to build on. So, so we're looking to have the right partner to be able to execute on that. Yeah, so let's talk uh, a bit about the downstream industries in Ghana. How will the master plan positively impact the downstream industries reliant on aluminium products? Uh, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, that, that was essentially why we set up a smelter to start with in 1967, with a with view that we would develop our mines and we'll build a refinery, we'll develop downstream industries. So though we were not able then to, to build, uh, to, to establish the mines or a refinery, the uh, the presence of an aluminium uh, smelter uh, in Alworx Alworx uh, today is in the hands of the private sector. Uh, there's interest even from uh, overseas players uh, to to do with what Alworx does. Uh, so as a secondary producer, Alworx is, is is producing or will produce uh, goods uh, in the downstream uh, for the, for the Kenyan market and for uh, West Africa and even Africa uh, uh, broadly. Uh, there are also companies like um, uh, Western Raw Tropical Cables. There are other cable companies. There are uh, other, other uh, several, uh, you know, extrusions, construction companies, uh, uh, or rather companies that are producing product for the construction industry uh, using, uh, you know, uh, the metal produced by Valco. Now, there is a real opportunity here to expand on all of this. Uh, we've uh, done a lot of uh, work around this. Uh, an interesting development in Ghana is the development of the automobile industry. Uh, we have about nine uh, companies that are uh, producing semi uh, knockdown. Um, uh, uh, you know, they, 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 are, they are assembling uh, cars in Ghana, cars and trucks in Ghana. Uh, in future, they will be moving down uh, the line to you know assembly, uh, you know further assembly of, of their uh, facilities, and they will need uh, products that um, will be produced by the aluminium industry. So we're working very closely with them. Uh, we're matching 
uh, manufacturers with the demands of what they would have. Uh, we're also looking at the international markets. There's an exciting development of the Africa continental free trade area, which allows us to have a, a broader market uh, into the rest of Africa, you know, some uh, 1.4 billion uh, markets, uh, people market, uh, with GDP also uh, close to about $1.5 billion, so, uh, or trillion dollars, sorry. So, so there is a real opportunity to, to drive uh, some of uh, what we're seeing, uh, not just uh, locally, but also uh, in the sub-region and regionally, and then to the rest of the world. So the downstream industry is, is a key part of what we're doing, and that is where, that's the end game, if you like, of, of everything that Kiadik is doing. Absolutely. <clears throat> so how does uh, Kiadik envision addressing the training and development needs of the local workforce to meet the, you know, uh, enhanced demands of the aluminum industry? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. So, so what you'll find if you go to uh, some of the aluminium smelters in the world, um, even uh, refineries in the world, uh, especially in the Middle East, even in Australia, you find Ghanaian uh, people working in these places. So Ghana's had a history of training. Valco's had a, a real history of training uh, uh, and developing people uh, over the years, uh, you know, thanks to the uh, foundations established by uh, the original owners Kaiser and Alcoa and others who, um, you know, in, in various guises manage the plant. So we have quite um, a good um, base in terms of qualified individuals or skilled labor uh, that, are, that are Ghanaian. Of course, some of them have since left the country, as I said, and working in other um, uh, jurisdictions. But with what we are doing, is beginning to attract some of them to come back uh, to Ghana. So we're developing uh, a refinery solution. We're working with one of the key uh, uh, people uh, who's uh, Ghanaian working, who's, who's uh, worked in the Middle East, has worked in Australia and places like that. Um, just to give you an example. So uh, what we're doing here, we, we are intentionally also designing into it uh, the training and development part of it. So with our partners, we want to ensure that uh, local content, as in Ghanaian, uh, uh, as people are developed and trained to be able to work in this industry over a period of time. So yes, we have a good base in terms of Ghanaians who have already worked in this industry and have the exposure. Uh, secondly, we're building into the uh, development program. Uh, so if you're looking at refineries which have never owned in Ghana, want to do the transfer of uh, skills and, and train people and, and have a, a clear training program uh, in the coming years. Uh, and then the smelter part, of course, leverage on uh, you know, our history and our, our, um, what we've been able to do to date. So in terms of sustainability and environmental responsibility, what measures do you plan to implement to make this project an example of responsible resource development for other parts of the world? Yeah, so that's, that's um, a very good question and that's our goal i think your question is our goal to make sure that we can be an example to the rest of the world and, and that's a tough ask you know um we're, we're dealing with very stringent environmental conditions in a world that is awake to climate change today um on the mining side uh, there's no secret that uh, bauxite occurs in forest reserves uh, and therefore how we mine in these forest reserves is going to be very important how we do reforestation is going to be very important how we put in place environmental action plans to make sure that we don't destroy the environment, but then we uh, re, um, uh, uh, you know, we re-establish the environments that we we touch. Uh, all of these are part of a comprehensive uh, uh, ESG um, uh, approach that we're using, you know, uh, uh, to 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 drive this whole thing. Uh, we're very much engaging the communities that we're working with. We're working with all our regulatory agencies, uh, whether it's where uh, our water commission, our forestry commission, uh, our minerals commission, um, et cetera. These are regulatory bodies that regulate what we do. Uh, we are signing up to globally acceptable standards, uh, uh, you know, so whether that is, um, uh, you know, uh, Aluminium Institute or other groups like that, we're signing up to these standards to make sure that what we do uh, is, is at the leading edge, is a, is a, is a globally accepted best practice and will make us an example uh, to, to others. We've looked at uh, certain examples um, in, in other parts of the world. Uh, we've seen some of the dangers or some of the problems that we've had more recently, Alunorte in uh, Brazil and uh, uh, other places like that. So there are real challenges, but uh, we're very much alert to them. 
and our uh, ESG plan, uh, our sustainability plan, uh, all these uh, speak to uh, the standards that we want to aspire to and have one work. And these have been uh, baked into the proposals and plans that we, we and our partners are looking at. Um, can you please share uh, a vision of how these projects will transform the lives of the people living around the areas of the mining and refining um, operations? Yeah, so so that's that's a very important question. I mean, the um, the communities where our mines are based are our primary responsibility. They are welfare, uh, they are development, um, the the husbandry of the environment that we're working in are at the fore of everything that we do. We've gone out of our way to establish uh, community groups. We call them the 19 member committees. That's not mean they're 19 members, but that's just the euphemism we use. And the, the reason for that really is to make sure that the people have a say in what we're developing. Uh, they can contribute to what we're doing. They can understand the investments we're making. They can understand uh, and see the impact on the development of their community. So we've even got in our plans with our partners uh, an allocation uh, of, of funding uh, based on the production that, that we have that will be used for community-led infrastructure or development projects. And this is something that we won't do uh, not unplanned, but in a planned way. So over a period of time, call it five years, 10 years or whatever, you'll see the impact in terms of what we're trying to do uh, in a comprehensive plan. So uh, we're doing these things intentionally. We're involving uh, the local uh, traditional authorities. You know, we have a, a chieftaincy system. So the chiefs and the, the people in the area, uh, women's groups, you know, so women's groups uh, have a say in what we're doing. Um, uh, you know, the youth have a say in what we're doing. Uh, different groups, even religious bodies. We've brought all these people together in this 19 member committee. And that is where that conversation happens to make sure that what we're doing, what we're planning, what we're implementing, uh, it's in line with their aspirations as well and helps to regenerate the community. Uh, our history of uh, engagement of, um, uh, if like, mining firms in, in communities has not been great. And, and we want to correct that. So, so GIAREC is setting itself out to say that, look, this is what we are aiming to do from day one. Uh, we're involving you from day one, and we want you to have a say in helping to shape that future that we all want to see. That is great. That is amazing to hear. Uh, so how does GEATEC envision integrating these mining and refining projects to achieve a cohesive supply chain and enhance Ghana's position in the global aluminium industry? That's it. Like we started off by talking about integration. Supply, yeah. We started off by talking about uh, value addition. Hmm. Uh, we talked about making sure that we can do all of these things in a comprehensive way under the GEATEC umbrella. So, so for us, these are important tenets to making sure that uh, that supply chain cohesion is there from day one. Um, we've, we've lived with a mine that has been operating for 70 years, but never had any relationship with our smelter. Uh, we've also lived a situation where we have a smelter that imports alumina uh, from the likes of uh, from countries like Jamaica and others, uh, so we can just smelt aluminum in Ghana. Uh, so we've lacked that cohesion to start with, or we've lacked that uh, integration uh, to start with. So the projects that we have designed is making sure that we can address those things, that we can be um, at, the, at the fore of that and, and drive integration and cohesion in, in, in what we're doing, the supply chain. So we're signing back-to-back -back agreements uh, with the mining to refining, and then from the refining to the smelting, and of course, from the smelting, uh, primary aluminum being used to drive the downstream industries. So that addresses that side of it locally. Then, of course, internationally, where we export alumina, where we export aluminium, uh, we're very much keyed into the global markets. Um, uh, Valco today uh, exports principally to uh, some uh, markets. We'll continue with that uh, when we come to export alumina. Like I said, the offtake agreements that we have will also ensure that we have a market for the product that we produce here. So all of that will ensure that, you know, from a supply chain point of view, we are very much keyed into uh, global markets and, and that, that we're driving, um, uh, you know, we're, we're playing um, in a very, uh, you know, methodical and intentional manner uh, in these markets too. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so that brings to my uh, last and final question. Uh, developing refineries requires a significant amount of investment. So can you please elaborate on the financial partnerships and funding strategies that you plan to utilize and ensure the successful establishment and operations of this aluminum refineries, if you please? Yeah, very, very good question, Ishita. Um, I think you know, you'll know that uh, refineries are very capital yeah. intensive. They are also... Yeah intricate long-term projects you, you have to manage a whole array of risks so bringing finance into this is not easy uh, and we're very much aware of that and um, that's why we are doing this in partnership so you know i should have said from the outset that gear will own equity in each of these projects that we develop so if you take the four projects you know essentially we'll be a holding company who hold equity stakes in each of these projects. You know, today we have a 20% stake in the a mining company. Uh, when we build that mine and refinery, we'll hold a minimum 30% stake. Uh, in project two, that's how we've designed it. Uh, that 30% stake will be there. Uh, project three, similar to that. Project four, probably 40% of the, of the, of the, of the uh, end plan. So we're looking at holding equity stakes across that piece. Of course, that means that we have to um, uh, put in our investment uh, with these, but our partners will also put up Part of the investment. Uh, we'll use a, a mix of debt and equity uh, to structure our financial structure will be a mix of that uh, and each project of course will have its own um, uh, sort of uh, definitions of uh, how much equity and how much debt but in principle that's the structure that we're taking to market. Uh, it's also important to note that these things that we're doing uh, should have a market so if I talk about the refineries which is what your question is referring to uh, that's why it's taking time for us to define the solution uh, for a refinery, because if we build a refinery for the sake of building a refinery and we don't have offtake agreements or we don't have markets and things like that, that will run into problems. So we're looking at signing significant offtake agreements, you know, 30 year plus. That will mean that we can supply, uh, you know, uh, 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 the product and the product has a market. But of course, that also means that our design, our financing, our operation, uh, consistency, seamless delivery, all these things need to be in place. So we're working to make sure that we get these things right so that the funding becomes easier. Uh, a lot of the financing will be project finance based, so each project will be ring fenced and financed uh, separately. Uh, and, and that will, will allow us to drive uh, the, uh, you know, uh, make, make this financially viable. So. Um, the, 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 the partnerships that we're setting up uh, is key to what we're doing. Uh, access to markets uh, is again key to this, and that's what we're looking to do.